In my world, we like going fast on the water. And here at Pro Watercraft, we build the most innovative stand-up anyone has ever seen. We not only build amazing watercraft, but we build a wide range of handling products for pretty much any skill level and almost every watercraft. But in this video and this video series, I wanna show you the step-by-step -step process of building the fastest stand-up in the world, but on a budget. Let me show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, so usually it starts with like a vision board. So uh, th this is the beginning of my vision board. These are my, these are my must-haves, right? So I always kind of write down where I wanna go with this. What's my vision of this? So my must-haves, right off the top, you know, anytime you associate horsepower, you gotta think like high octane gas or whatever, not in this case. I'm a 91 octane gas, I wanna go to the pump, I wanna fill it up, I don't wanna have to deal with chasing race gas. So that's a must have, that's a box I'm gonna check. Again, off the shelf parts, like the one thing about the motor that we're gonna use is that it's readily available. There's lots of aftermarket. So I'm gonna be taking the cams, the pistons, the superchargers, I'm gonna find stuff that you can find as well. And those are the parts that we're gonna put into this build. Reliability, absolutely, I don't want, you know, I'm gonna, like I said, it's gonna be the fastest stand-up in the world, but it's gonna be reliable. I don't wanna mess with it, I wanna ride it. This is a ski that I plan on riding at Body Beach or around Lake Havasu. And like I said, Body Beach is definitely a place I love to ride, and it's got to be incredibly fast around the buoys. Um, the the current stand-up we made, the the we call it the Monster, right? It's the 2.0 Pro Force with the Sea Dew engine. It's fast, but it's not quite buoy fast. This ski will be. And then last box to check, I plan on definitely going over 80 miles an hour. I don't know of anybody how fast anybody's, most stand-up guys are in the 70s. We definitely are going into the 80 mile an hour range with this build. So let me show you a few of the parts that we're gonna do. So I talked about some of the parts I'm gonna use. Let me show you some of these things that I've already bought. Some are new, some are used, but I basically went on Marketplace, Facebook. I went on eBay. Uh, I called some of my friends at like Riva. Um, I got a cam, right? We're gonna put a cam in. These are like 600 bucks, really not that terrible of expense. I got different components. I got a ECU with a really nice 91 octane uh, flash on it that should rev around 9,000 RPM. I got a modified supercharger. You're probably like, what is the motor he's using? Well, we are gonna be using a CDU. I believe it's from like a 2007 SeaDoo um, RXP. So it uh, usually starts off at like a 215 horsepower. That's with like the stock uh, supercharger and the stock flash. I'm, you know, I'm not really sure exactly how much horsepower we're gonna have with all these parts that we've, uh, we're, we're gathering right now. I'm, I'm assuming we should be 260 to 300, but maybe in the comments you guys could you know, we could, uh, we'll show you some of the specs and then you can give us some comments on what you think the horsepower rating should be on the ski. Again, um, we've got some exhaust adapters. I got upgraded valves. We got springs. We got an open loop water system. And then I'm definitely liking the Freedom Pumps, you know, so we've been using a lot of Freedom Pumps. So we're using a, a Freedom Pump in this build. So, that's a little look there. The motor is not here. Obviously, the motor is being built right now. And we're going to go check that out later. But here's a little look at the components that I bought off Marketplace on a budget uh, that we're going to put into this build. In this build, we're going to be using the ProForce 3.0. Last time we used the 2.0. But in this build, we started with um, uh, one of our production skis. And um, usually they come with the mounting, the engine mounting for the Kawasaki 1500 engine. So in this exact hull, we've ripped out the mounting area and we've kind of prepped and I've been working on 
kind of figuring out where the CDU engine's gonna go. And so there's some thought process behind where we're gonna put the engine from front to back to have a good center of gravity to make sure all the components inside fit. And um, so we're gonna show you a few of those components and how I go about this. So in pretty much all these builds, like when you see a jet ski come to life from conception to actual reality, you know, you gotta figure out how to align the engine with the pump and the bearing support, right? So it takes fixtures and jigs. And so what you're seeing here is actually was a CDU engine that was running at one time, but we disassembled it and we turned it into a fixture so we can set it in and line it up with all the components and all the, you know, the drive shaft and the pump and all that stuff uh, in the ski. So what you see here is basically a tool that we use in our shop. And we have the same version for like the Kawasaki and for the CD Spark and for the Yamaha TR1. So what we do is we take out the crankshaft and we put in like a sleeve section so we can slide an alignment tool in and out of it, right? So this basically isn't the motor that we're gonna be using. This is a tool that helps us align the engine. So we're gonna put this in and then we're gonna show you kind of how like how we slide in the shaft and how we look at like aligning um, the engine to fit within the hull. Over here, you're gonna be like, well, what is this mess of like uh, broken pieces or whatever? So this is basically, um, we're looking at the engine bed for the C2 supercharged engine. So this is a three motor mount system and I've cut it into several different pieces here because it's not the same setup as the 2.0. I'm running a different drive shaft angle in the 3.0. And so I've kind of cut and changed and we're gonna graft this thing into the ski and we're gonna show you how we do it uh, and make a whole new engine bed specifically for the 3.0. So these pieces on the table here are kind of to help me sort of mock up uh, how to get this engine in the right location at the right angle uh, in the Proforce 3.0. So I've turned around the watercraft here so we can kind of talk about how do you start, right? Like, do I just put it in the engine? Do I, you know, like a lot of people are like, where do I start? Well, for me on this watercraft right now, generally I start with the pump. Everything, I call that my zero point. So everything from the pump forward all gets set off of my zero pump or zero point. So right here is our CDU alignment tool, which you can use this for any watercraft, but it's specifically from CDU. You can buy these on eBay, so it's a pretty affordable and easy piece to acquire. So at the back of the ski here, right? So the Proforce is set up with the Kawasaki pumps. That's a four volt pump system. I've got this pump, I've put a sleeve inside of it that perfectly fits this shaft, right? A little trick, you always wanna like kind of WD-40 these shafts and make sure it goes through smooth because what you're trying to do is feel the tension, feel the friction of the shaft going through the pump and into the bearing support and into the engine and that friction will tell you how aligned you are. And alignment obviously is key because that reduces vibration which is reduces any sort of like friction in the parts and gives you performance. So, so I always start with the pump the pump is my zero point, I'm sliding in the dry shaft, and that's pretty much where I start to put in the engine and figure out where I'm gonna put these components. So I talked about this is my tool, right? So my tool needs to have adjustment. So when I put it into the watercraft, I can like raise it, lower it, tilt it side to side, and make it align up with my alignment shaft. So on the bottom of this tool, I'm gonna to show you a little trick that we do. All right, so here's the bottom. So these points here, these are basically bolts that I've made with little wing nuts. And they're designed to kind of twist in and twist out and give me the right uh, alignment. It kind of helps me float the engine into the hull to get the alignment right before I start putting in my, uh, my, my puzzle here of motor mounts. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna lift this thing, put it into the ski and kind of show you how that looks and then we'll move on to the next step.
So I'm probably gonna repeat myself a few more times, but it's kind of a fun process to learn. You know, when you are comfortable with the lining of the engine and making that perfect with the pump, it's very satisfying, right? So when we're, when we're aligning our skis here, you know, this alignment tool and like I said, the friction in the alignment tool and how it, when it comes into the engine, how stiff the shaft is, you can push the engine around and make the shaft go in and out really easy or push it to the side and be really stiff. So we really work on making sure that our alignment is precise and all of our production watercraft, it's a no shim ski. You're pretty much bolting in the engine and the pump and everything is drilled and tapped in these Proforce 3.0s. And it's very satisfying when you can just sort of assemble it and it's perfect. And it's because we learned this process a long time ago and I believe we've perfected it. And here we are showing you how, what we do. So once we get the engine in there where we're happy with it, and I found this engine location by a few variables. We have a supercharger on the back of the engine. The supercharger has like an intake hose that comes up and pretty much we have this, uh, we'll call this like a bulkhead wall or a firewall. It's basically the front of the tray. And so the air filter really has to kind of fit into this area. And then on the other side, we have an intercooler. So again, like this is, this is not our intercooler, right? This is sort of a mock-up of what I intend to get. Um, and I did a little research online. I, you know, I could go buy a shell and I can build my own intercooler and make it perfectly fit into the ski, but that kind of doesn't check one of the boxes in the beginning, right? I wanna be able to assemble this with parts off the shelf that you could get as well. So I got all the measurements online of what I'm gonna make or what I'm gonna get. And so I've kind of got this intercooler that again, I found my engine location by a few of these variables. Now, in our 2.0, we've designed a really elaborate fuel tank in the back of the ski. In this build, we're gonna use the Kawasaki 1500 SXR fuel tank in the front of the watercraft. So we have lots of room in the front and we're gonna put that six gallon fuel tank up there. So this is a little bit of our thought process of like where the engine's gonna go, what parts we're gonna use and how we go about this process. So here's a look at some of my mock-up parts. These aren't really parts I've intend on using, but they're very similar to the ones that I'm going to use. We have a, um, I think it's like a 215 supercharger. And I believe the only difference between like a lot of these superchargers, maybe a little bit of the size, a different wheel, but as far as how it bolts, where the air intake, where it exposes off to the intercooler, you know, all that's is kind of the same. So this works for my purpose. Um, this is my little, right now, my little elbow for the air filter. I know there's some aftermarket versions that kind of bring this out to a four inch. I probably need to get that to just confirm it's gonna fit in here, but I feel like I have enough room. I'm gonna show you in a minute when I put this on. Um, we have the head, which is basically where like the cams and the valves are and the air intake. This is again, like, these are just mock-up parts. Um, I just use this for Putting it in the ski, this is, I'm gonna use a stock air intake. I, I have like a brace for it, so I, sh I should be okay with that, but this will tell me where my throttle body is gonna be to my intercooler. And so I'm gonna put all this stuff inside the ski. We'll show you a little bit of like my thought process again of like how I'm laying out the, all the components. And um, uh, we'll just kind of figure out, you know, a lot of times when you put these watercraft together with all these unknowns, you sort of just have to fumble along until you figure it out and then back out, clean up, and then put it all together again. So I've done all the fumbling already, you know, but I'm gonna show you kind of what I went through and install these parts. So let's do it.
again, like knowing what I'm up against as far as the parts I'm buying, the location of the engine, is everything gonna fit? This is kind of like my way to kind of wrap my head around, am I going the right direction or not? Um, the biggest unknown of, like I had mentioned before, is you know making sure my air filter has enough room and the intercooler, you absolutely have to have an intercooler for the ski, you know, there's so much horsepower there. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of room to run like a really nice fizzle or something like that. So I'm running this a uh, little bit smaller intercooler. It's more of like for, only for like 350 horsepower, which I think is a, probably enough for this, um, uh, for the ski. So I've mocked things up and I kind of have a, a really good idea. And it's kind of nice, you know, the, the Pro Force 3.0 has such a large opening of the engine, um, way more so than any other watercraft out there. We have lots of room all the way around, so I don't really feel too constricted. You know, of course, we have a little limitation because of the tray. Super important to have the tray in a certain part of the watercraft for the rider. But um, I believe we have a plenty of room for the intercooler and all these components. I have lots of room for my front gas tank. And, um, and if I ever were to like drop or need to like work around the ski, there's still lots of arm space, which is really nice. And that was definitely a, a bonus with uh, the 3.0. Um, so yeah, this is a little look at of our layout. And from this point, once I'm happy with where all the components are kind of going to live, that's basically where I'm going to go back to that puzzle on the table and take those pieces and fit them in here so I can get uh, a new bed plate made specifically for the 3.0 and this engine and these parts here. So uh, that's kind of going to be uh, something we're going to probably do in the next video, show you like building all that and putting those pieces together and how we make bed plates and a lot of the things like uh, what we want to integrate into the bed plate, like so aluminum on the backside and maybe certain shapes so it kind of cradles the intercooler and kind of fits all the OEM motor mounts. So we're really not making something too super specific. So um, this is a good look of like how things are going to start and uh, stay tuned for the next videos of um, like watching this thing come alive. You know, we're gonna do video after video until we take this thing to the water and see how fast it goes. So uh, do me a favor in the comments, you know, give me an idea of like how much horsepower do you think this ski needs to have uh, or how much horsepower we're gonna get out of the components that you see that we're putting into this watercraft. I'll make a list into the description so you can see what supercharger, what tune, what cams, um, you know, we're going to show you where we have board up pistons, you know, and uh, you know, maybe let us know how much horsepower you think uh, we're going to have in this build. So. If you're interested in following this build, you know, subscribe, like if you want. We're going to keep doing this build. So if you hit that notification bell, it's going to pop up and you're going to see our progress and and see this this uh, the fastest stand up in the world come to life. So until next time, we'll see you guys.